So this is our environment variables.c program. I've already compiled it and we'll refresh it. And this is the output of it. And this is what you should see when you run this on your web server. Now if you run this on a remote server, you're going to see even a little bit more information because you're going to get information about your client, where you're coming from on your web browser, and you'll get information about the server that uh, your CGI program is located on. That's if you're not running your own server on, on your computer right there. There's our argument vector, the first one, and it's just the name of the program because we don't have any other arguments coming in because of the way we have run this CGI. There's only argv sub zero, and that's the uh, name of the program itself. But you can use that to get the name of, of your own program if you like. A lot of these are just from the computer because they are still the environment that the web server is running in. That information is passed along as well, like the class path and path and the computer name and things like that that we don't really care about for CGI, but they're there. Here you see content length is zero, so that's going to be used along with our, uh, our other type down there when we get to our request method. If the request method was a uh, was a post, then we would know that uh, we'd have to look at this value and see how much data is coming in on on uh, standard in. And there's our gateway interface, a CGI 1.1, so we know what version of CGI we're running. That is the most current version. The HTTP accept is telling us that it will take any kind of MIME type star slash star, uh, just like it is in in uh, DOS or anything else. Everything is accepted. The accept language, uh, English, US. The connection is set with a keep alive, which we don't want to get into that, but that's an HTTP thing. The HTTP host is local host. Uh, that's what they are, are calling themselves. The user agent, this is coming from my browser right here that made this request. Uh, it's a compatible MSIE 7.0 and the NT version and the .NET version and all the common language runtime and all the rest of that that is available so that my server can make decisions uh, on this information and decide if it's going to use .NET or some other uh, uh, programming method to, to communicate with the, with the browser. But that's how you find out what kind of browser people are using out there. Here's the CPU type, and uh, the encoding that we will accept is gzip and deflate if they're going to send something back to us compressed. Uh, HTTPS, or an SSL connection, is turned off in this particular uh, request because we don't have HTTPS up here. So it has not come in on a secure port. If it did come in on a secure port on usually 443, then this HTTPS would be on and there would be another uh, few environment variables that uh, related to the key and other uh, information about the uh, secure connection. A little farther down here, we have our path and those kinds of things. And uh, path translated is a uh, a way that that we find where our uh, files are that we're in the ci net pub w's root and that's the upper part of the of the path which in this case uh, stands for our local host that's the path translated and then we can take that and add the tail end of, of this the cgi bin environment var variables to find where we uh, are in the actual machine itself here's the remote address and remote host which, again, if you're running this on your ISP, uh, will definitely be different from uh, what you see as the server name and, and uh, address. So that's the, that's the address of our client, the browser, and then we do a host lookup and get host by name. The server does that for us and finds out the name of the, of the thing. Here's uh, the request method is a get. So here we, so we know what, uh, where to read our information from. And down here is the server name itself, localhost, the server port. It is not, uh, we are not doing a secure connection. We are running HTTP 1.1 and it's Microsoft's IIS 5.1 It's installed on my computer here. So those are the server variables that uh, come to us in CGI. And that's pretty much, yep, that's all of them. Now, uh, there are others. Uh, you, I can't tell you all of them because some of them are built by your particular implementation of your server. Uh, so if you're using an Apache 2, you will have a few different variables than you will have with an IIS or an older IIS or even some different ser server that uh, 
you, you may be running because these deal with the environment of the server itself and the location where the CGI program is running. So there could be things that are important to that operating system and the server's implementation on that operating system. So uh, the place to find those are in your HTTP server, your web server's documentation, and look up CGI variables and environment variables, and you'll see if there's something unique that you're going to be able to use in your programming that uh, I don't have available on on this machine. So that's how to see all the environment variables and uh, we took a look at, at the code. I'll show it to you again and it'll also be available on, on the site here so that you can run this and then you can uh, uh, maybe uh, add some ifs. I was going to do this for you but I think you should do it. Just add some statements in here that only print the important ones like the ones that start with HTTP or start with uh, remote or server because those are the ones that you actually care about and then you can refine this list somewhat and not have uh, quite so much information rolling around out there that you don't really care about and it doesn't matter to your program. The big black hole. There we go. So we've looked at, we've looked at code to an examine all the environment variables that come to us in CGI and we've done quite a bit of CGI work. You can now write a program that will interact with the internet and with a client on the internet and you can receive form data and uh, do something with it and uh, send it back to the client. So uh, good job. You made it all the way through uh, this section of the video training that we have for VTC and we are going to uh, go on and look at some more C programming. We're going to take a look at the standard library and a few other things as we wrap up the uh, video uh, training course. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.